Haven't you heard? I don't have a heart. Everyone knows that. Haven't you heard? I don't have a heart. Everyone knows that. That's not true, <laughs> Mary. Find a cowboy in the Middle West and bring him back to shake us up a bit. Find a cowboy in the Middle West and bring him back to shake us up a bit. How would I describe my character? Robert Crawley is uh, conservative by birth, a liberal by instinct, and about six foot one, and a Scorpio. Um, how would I describe Mary? Mary is the uh, eldest daughter of the Crawleys. She's an aristocrat. She's witty. She is. Um, uh, she's very strong, um, and she's a. She's bossy. <laughs> Some of my favourite Mary moments are season two, the will they, won't they stuff with Matthew. Um, I loved that. I'm so sorry. Favourite highlights for, for the character of Robert would be, uh, well, there's one that stands out, which is basically vomiting blood all over the table in, uh, in the final uh, season that was a good laugh because not that many people saw it coming especially not Elizabeth McGovern my screen wife who was opposite and got splattered <laughs> one of my favorite Mary lines is um, I'm going upstairs to take off my hat I'm going upstairs to take off my hat one of mine's of Roberts I suppose would be um, if I scream blue murder every time someone tried to kiss me when I was at Eton I'd have gone horse in a month I mean, if I shouted blue murder every time someone tried to kiss me at Eton, I'd have gone horse in a month. Yeah, I also love Mary's line, I'm not often called sentimental. I'm not often called sentimental. And also, uh, there's uh, No Man is an Island, Carson, not even Thomas Barrow. No Man is an Island, Carson, not even Thomas Barrow. I, I loved all of the early early stuff with Edith and uh, Mary and Sybil, just that dynamic between the three sisters. Um, but, you know, some, Laura and I have a lot of fun, had a lot of fun playing those scenes where they were really kind of going at each other and uh, teasing one another. And, um, and particularly in season six, um, when Edith finally, um, yeah, it all comes to a head and she finally, you know, calls Mary what she is <laughs> at that moment. I know you. I know you to be a nasty, jealous, scheming Now listen, you pathetic. You're a And uh, I felt like it was a great payoff for Edith because, you know, Mary had it coming. Relationship with Matthew. I loved that dynamic and that there was always this, you know, want for them to be together. And, um, you know, for her various reasons, she was resisting. And I think deep down she was always in love with him. Um, and uh, I, I loved that, that toing and froing of the two characters. So I just loved their journey, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, the end of their journey was very sad. <laughs> um, but it kind of, it, it really, I think, made Mary who, who she is. I think it was such a big part of her story and her life that it really informed who she be eventually became as a person. There's a lovely line where she says, I loved who I was when I was with him. Sometimes I don't know who I'm most in mourning for. Matthew or the person I used to be when I was with him. You know, the, the Mary that she was. So, um, yeah, that's what I loved about that relationship. Oh, I think the, the, the beats that are, are most memorable, uh, even though it was a very sad uh, bit of the story, was after Sybil's death, when the, the marriage is truly fractured. I, I really enjoyed that sequence and the, come, and the, and the reconciliation of them, I, I thought. And Elizabeth was, was brilliant in, in, in that particular uh, beat of the story. Um, and, uh, and, and the fun with, uh, with Richard E. Grant's character, Mr. Bricker, the, uh, the art historian who shows a tremendous interest in Cora's paintings. I travelled to London in order to give my wife a treat, only to find she's out dining with another man. Mr. Bricker wanted to discuss the paintings. And uh, resulting in a, in a bust up between me and him, handbags at dawn. That was good fun. It did take hours to shoot, and, and I managed to crack his ribs, but we're still talking. <laughs> well, we're asked this question so often. Um, you know, why why is the show such a you know has become such this you know such a success? And it's difficult to pinpoint exactly what it is. Hugh often says, you know, if we knew that, 
we bottle it and sell it. I don't know. Someone yeah. someone said the other day, very simply, when when we turned the question back on on the interviewer, and uh, she said, "Well, it's very simple. It's about family, um, and that family being not just the Crawley family, but the mm. family that resides in this house and in this world." Mm. And uh, I think the sense of this uh, this uh, these group of people trying to get through life um, without doing too much damage to each other. I think that resonates.